This is RimWorld. It's a sandbox survival colony sim. It's also one of my most favorite games of all time, so this review is either going to be very biased, or I'm going to tear it to shreds. We'll see. RimWorld is a one-man passion project, and an insanely popular cult classic. I think it's done so well because it's taken the incredible freedom and sandboxy nature of a game like Dwarf Fortress, and it's made it a lot more accessible. <laughs> I scoffed when writing that because a volcano is more accessible than Dwarf Fortress. Tyne and Sylvester literally just gave his game a user interface and it was miles ahead of the competition. Who would have thought? Rimworld is a lot more than meets the eye. I think because it has such simple graphics it's been able to develop with a very small team. I also think it's been their competitive edge. I can imagine that some of the most time consuming parts of game dev are the graphics and animations, so if you forego those, you can work on some incredibly advanced and complex internals. And that's exactly what this game has done. There are a lot of things being simulated. Everything from the consciousness levels of your colonists in relation to the weather, to the penetration resistance of each individual type of animal fur. <laughs> it's really impressive. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me start from the beginning. In RimWorld, you start off as a bunch of survivors marooned on an alien planet. You're just meant to survive, but very quickly you begin to thrive. Your colonists are complex little individuals, and they have a host of needs and wants to take care of. This can be easy to manage when the sun is shining and the birds are chirping, but quickly shit hits the fan. You're on a rimworld, as in a planet on the outer rim of some nondescript galaxy. In short, it's a hostile shithole. Everything from the wildlife to the locals wants to eat your spleen. So combat and defense is integral to the experience. It also means that children on the rim are taught from a very young age how to hold a gun. But we'll get to the children. They're new. You can build up your settlement, attract more survivors, who are just random people really, research new technology, and a lot more. Some of the biggest challenges to overcome are things like ensuring you have enough food, medicine, and electricity. But once you have that sorted, the game doesn't really hold back at what you can achieve. There is an end goal of escaping the planet, but I have like 500 hours and I've literally never completed this questline. My opinion is it's pretty obsolete. Remold is a game about freedom, it really doesn't need a finishing line. The progression system in this game is honestly unreal. There is an extensive tech tree, and a lot you can do to build up your settlement. You might start off living in log cabins and eating raw rice, but eventually you'll be styling it in a hyper-advanced Arcotech fortress with automatic defenses and cup holders and everything. What marks the game as a really great colony sim is that there are always more ways to improve your base. Almost every object and item in the game has a rating of how well it is made, which affects their stats. Which means you can go absolutely nuts trying to outfit your colonists with the best furniture, decor, guns, clothing, etc. Depending on where you build your settlement also radically changes the kind of experience you're going to have. Building in a fertile winterless jungle might seem like a good idea, but initially you're going to have to cut through a lot of foliage to build, and diseases are going to be a constant irritant. Alternatively, you could build your base on the side of a wintry mountain, but the local bug population might protest, and you'll have to be clever about when and how you grow your food. Some people even like playing in the Arctic Circle as a solo cannibal. Some people are weird. There are also other factions to interact with and trade and even raid. Sometimes they visit you, sometimes you have to go pay them a visit. They can even give you dynamic quests with randomized rewards. It's a cool system that makes the world feel a bit more alive. However, I always felt like interacting with the overworld was a bit underwhelming. See, it's not quite as simulated as your colony is. For example, if a trader comes to your base, he doesn't depart from his settlement and travel to yours, he sort of just appears and then disappears again. Same with raids. Hell, you could even build on a secluded island and raider frequency won't change. It stands out as all just a bit too simple for a game this complex. Much like the rest of the game, combat in Remold is simple on the exterior but super complicated on the interior. It's easy enough for a new player to equip their colonists and press the draft button to fight enemies, but there are a lot of hidden numbers. Naturally, things like cover and the character's relevant fighting skills matter. But so does the quality of the weapon they're using, the light levels, how far they're from their target, etc. Also, because the health and healing system is so complicated, your characters can receive some really interesting injuries. Every organ and body part of each character determines their stats. So, if you take out an eye, boom, minus 50% vision, which affects how well they can do a lot of jobs, like seeing their loved ones. If you take out both eyes, then, well, you get the picture. Ultimately, this means in combat your colonists can sustain a lot of weird injuries that have realistically long-lasting effects. So prevention of harm is a priority. The best way to prevent harm is often to dish it out, and Rimworld gives you a lot of tools to do so. 
Weapons range from bows and specifically Roman javelins to railguns and doom missiles. You can also make use of landmines, mortars and even satellite death rays. The game also lets you get creative with your defences. You could train an army of rats to enjoy the taste of man flesh and then release them on unsuspecting attackers. Or if you have someone incapable of manual labour, why not replace all their arms and legs with battle claws and turn them into a death cyborg? The sky's the limit. You use these tools mostly against raids. Pretty regularly somebody or something wants to come onto your chunk of land and you have to deal with them. Sometimes it's just a man hunting rabbit, other times it's a literal army. It gets harder and harder the further you progress. Eventually mechanoid death teams become regular clients of yours. Remember when I talked about shit hitting the fan? Well, these raids are the fan in this metaphor. Or, or maybe they're the shit. You, you get what I'm saying. They're when the metal of your colony, or more importantly its defences, get tested. If you aren't prepared it usually results in game over. The hardest parts of these raids can sometimes even be the recovery periods. More often than not it's your doctor who gets shot, so he has to crawl himself to the med bay, before helping Tim over here who's just got his arm sliced off. All while Bob over there is rapidly developing an infection from the 13 pieces of lead shrapnel in his kidney. Oh, and your character's emotions aren't put on hold when there is a fight either. Sometimes a well-timed temper tantrum in the machine gun bunker can really throw a spanner in the works. That's probably a good enough segue to talk about the emotions of your colonists. Like I said, they are really complicated, just like real people. Obvious things can affect their mood, like losing a pet or missing a meal, but small things too, like having to eat while standing. That one's a meme at this point. Their mood is part of the progression system, as you're always trying to make your colony nicer for them. You need to keep your colonists happy, because they have a pretty low threshold for having a meltdown. These come in two distinct flavours. Minor meltdowns, like going to the fridge and eating their emotions, and major ones, which involve things like beelining to your prison and committing war crimes. You obviously want to avoid these. Tynan Sylvester has expressed time and time again that Rimworld is a character-driven game. So he has put a lot of time and effort into making Collins dynamic and complex. And it really shows. I think the game has reached a perfect balance with regards to the colonists. You can do a lot to mitigate their negative emotions, but it's impossible to keep everyone happy 24-7. Especially with all the random crap that can happen. That brings me to my next point. People love random, and that's what Rimwald does best. It's chaotic and you're really free to do some insane things in this game. People on the subreddit are always raving about doing zany things like turning their neighbours into furniture, or setting up organ harvesting operations. I usually just try to make all my colonists into super cyborgs. Who cares if they're addicted to luciferum, the ultra hellishly addictive enhancer that makes people kill their loved ones? Look how fast I can make hats! The randomness and sheer volume of content in Rimworld ultimately translates into an absurd level of replayability. It's honestly the best case study for procedural generation in a video game. Everything is randomised, your colonists, your planet, your start, your progression, the events that affect you, and even the artwork your colonists produce. It's honestly an RMG. A random meme generator. I also wanted to talk about Rimworld's DLCs. There are three of them now, and, well, the first one, Royalty, was an interesting addition to the game. I sort of like some of its progression elements that it adds, but overall I don't think it's in line with the sandboxy themes of the game. It adds a nobility system and psychic abilities for your character. You basically elect one of your colonists to be a ruler, and then they require a throne room in some title-specific clothing. The more noble they get, the stronger their psychic abilities become, but the more they demand luxuries. It's an interesting narrative that all the royalty in Rimwald are also psychers, but it is incredibly railroady for Rimwald. It forces a feudal system onto your colony and makes you have to play a certain way. You either have to appease the local nobles and climb their hierarchy, or go against them. Rimwald is about freedom, so giving you a few paths to choose from at the start of every playthrough isn't conducive to the whole ethos. The second DLC is much better. It adds religion and ideology into the game. So you can take your weird group of cave-dwelling cannibals and make it a part of their culture to eat people in the dark. It's funny because it's a really simple system that just adds a lot of flavour to all of your games. It even changes the aesthetic of your colony to match your ideology's themes. The hippies get beanbags and the ultra-nationalist death knights get bone floors. This is the hallmark of a good DLC. It shouldn't be a tacked-on system that doesn't align with the rest of the game. It should blend seamlessly with the main experience. The latest DLC to Rimwald that was just released is honestly amazing. It adds so much. It includes a system to perpetuate and grow your colony with children. This adds so much to the late game because not only can you improve your current colonists, but you can start working on your future ones too. 
It also carries the same Rimworld weirdness with things like growing bats and gene editing, so you can make all kinds of funky super babies. Here's one that can breathe fire. The gene editing system sounds like it might be complex, but it's basically just like Build-A-Bear. You can extract random genes from your colonists and then mix and match them like a genetic cocktail. And then you can just go and inject that cocktail into someone else. Presto. This complements the new xenotypes, aka aliens. There's a whole host of different humanoid variants you can play as now, and even more that you can interact with in the world. The xenotypes are great because they complement and encourage different playstyles, just like the ideology DLC. They really add a lot of replayability, because they're all just different enough that you have to shift your playstyle to better facilitate their new strengths and weaknesses. The DLC also adds a system that allows building and controlling mech units through one of your colonists. I'm not a huge fan of this because it basically dictates that every playthrough you're going to have one of these mechanators. It's the same issue I had with the royalty DLC. It's going to be part of each of your colonies. I guess you can just ignore it though. The part I do like about it though is that the trade-off for building these mechs is pollution. It generates as you build more mechs and you have to freeze it to prevent it from spreading. Tynan described it as like debt. A little bit is fine, but you want to keep an eye on it, otherwise it's going to ruin you. Something that's always made me scratch my head in Rimworld is these guys, the storytellers. They've been in the game since day one, and I've always had the feeling that they were concept art for the game that Tynan just loved so much that he left them in. They act as a sort of dungeon master in a D&D kind of sense. They're the ones who drive the narrative forward, in the form of the events that they throw at you. You pick one at the start of the game, and your three choices are default slow build-up lady, more relaxed easy lady, and randy fucking random. <laughs> who just throws anything at you, like Nuclear Winter the second you start. The reason I scratch my head at them is because they feel a bit out of place. They're pretty much the only named characters in a game that is otherwise procedurally generated. Why do they have these really specific aesthetics and personalities, and who are they within the narrative of the game? They're just there. I thought long and hard about them and realized they've only really added to Rimworld's success, so I guess they're fine. They do give you someone to blame when your base explodes. My biggest gripe with Rimworld isn't really a gripe with the game itself, but rather something I've always disagreed with Tynan on. It's always been a part of his approach to the game that it is primarily a character-centric experience. The emphasis is on the colonists, not so much the world or some overarching narrative or whatever. But in my experience, Rimworld has always been a colony sim first and foremost. I know the two aren't mutually exclusive, but I've always felt that the individual personalities and stories you experience kind of melt away when you play the game for long enough. I realize that this is kind of specific to how I play the game, but I think most people over a certain amount of hours probably start feeling the same way. You stop focusing on the randomly generated stories of the characters, and more on developing your colony as a whole. Sure, you get some funny stories here and there, like when a wild boar makes its way into your fridge and drinks all your beer, but eventually you just start playing the game at 3 times speed and stop reading new colonist backstories. The mechanics of the game are so dynamic and crazy that they can create space for great narratives and stories. But these become overarching about the whole colony and not really about the individual characters. Honestly, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Or even Tynan's. I even sent him an email. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So anyway, update, he actually replied to my email, holy crap. I really didn't think he was going to respond, but here's what he said. People have different playstyles. The game is designed to work on multiple levels at once. What you get out of it is different than what others do, but both are valid. And to that I say, fair. Rimworld is a game about freedom, and that includes freedom of playstyle. The game facilitates the big colony late game playstyle, as well as the small colony story generating playstyle, and everything in between I guess. And it seems that the direction the game is heading is going to continue to encourage both. Overall, Rimworld is an amazing experience, and a game that can be played almost infinitely. The randomness of each playthrough has kept me coming back time and time again. There are just so many different experiences to be had, and no two playthroughs are the same. It can be complex at first, especially when you're presented with screens like this so early on. But it is very much a trial and error kind of experience. Your first colony isn't going to survive, and that's okay. You'll get a great story out of it. The game is under great leadership, and I have no doubt in my mind that it's only going to get better. So, if you haven't already, give it a try. I can't recommend it enough. Thanks for watching.